Hello ladies and gents, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna give you my reaction video of the epic final that just ended between Rafael Nadal and Daniel Medvedev. What an unbelievable performance by the both of these superbly well-playing tennis players. The nature force from Mallorca, Rafael Nadal. I don't have any words enough any words left in my vocabulary to describe this phenomenal force of nature. One of the best athletes of all time who won his 21st Grand Slam by beating Nad uh, Daniel Medvedev in a fifth set battle. Nadal, who is 10 years older than Medvedev, showed no mercy, showed no physical fatigue in the end. Just 10 years after the epic loss against uh, Novak Djokovic in 2012, just five years uh, from the epic loss against Roger Federer, Nadal is not only a 21-time uh, Grand Slam champion, he is all, also the oldest man to win here. Roger Federer was also 36 years, but Nadal is uh, more closer to the 37, so he's older than, than him at the age of 35 and a half to win this hardcore title that some people have counted out. Even I, I have to surrender for Nadal's greatness once again. I had him as, uh, I had Medvedev as the slightest uh, favorite with the lowest margin in my preview. And just like the US Open final in 2019, Nadal showed that uh, who's the best, who has the most fighting spirit. Nadal was more uh, hungry. He had more desire. He ha he was he had more heart than Medvedev, and he raised his level when it was most necessary. Because before this match, th this battle could have gone even, Steven. But after the first two sets, I thought, "Wow, Medvedev is pl playing flawless tennis." And then he had those three break points in the first set when he was up three two. Three break points in Nadal's serve. He had the match in his hand. What? But what did he do? He choked. In my opinion, he choked there. He couldn't take advantage of the, that big advantage that he had. And through this match, uh, this was a war. Every game was a war. Nobody wanted to surrender. It ain't over until the fat lady sings, as you all know. And Nadal, for the first time in his career, he's always improving everything. This phenomenal dude from Mallorca. After being down two sets in a Grand Slam final for the first time in his career, he's turned he's turned the stakes around and delivered a brutal performance in consistency, in power, in fighting. Uh, he had this... Uh, I know that mar um, he's a marathon man, but I had some issues with his uh, physique status after the Shapovalo game. And then he defeated Berrettini pretty easy and he came into this match with rest, with um, more power. With uh, He, he, he re-energized and reloaded himself like a big champion always does. And you really have to take a, uh, the, the advantage of the whole court. And that's what Nadal did in his match. Um, I'm going to go in on what Nadal did great in this match and what he didn't do great. And the same with Medvedev. First to start with, Nadal, he had his game plan. He mixed up the game with volleys, with net, uh, with great net coverage. He sliced his back end. He tried to play aggressive. He was sending out a message uh, that he was here to be an aggressive, uh, with an aggressive approach. And uh, he used the whole court to his advantage. He took more risks than the passive uh, Russian and uh, he was re relentless uh, when he smelled blood because he was never beaten. Even though it seemed like he was b uh, beaten, Nadal got the chance. He took care of his chance and, and w like a true champion, he raises his level when it's most necessary. He was ripping those backhand winners from set three and forward. And um, uh, it didn't look that great in the beginning. Medvedev served tre tremendously good in the first set. He won 83% by his first serves uh, in the first set and 81% um, by his first serves in the second set. 
he didn't uh, do a, a lot of winners, but he, did, he barely missed also. So eight winners and six unforcerous in the first set for Medvedev. Seven winners and 16 unforcerous for Nadal in the second set. Medvedev did 70 winners and 10 unforcerous, and Nadal did 14 winners and eight unforcerous. So, uh, sorry, uh, Medvedev did 70 winners and 13 uh, win unforcerous in the in the second set, and Nadal did 14 winners and 20 unforcerous. So, his uh, total uh, unforcerous numbers in the first two sets was 36. That is very high, but Medvedev played like a wall. And in the third set, uh, they were a little bit. The stats were a little bit even. Uh, Nadal started to serve better. He got more rewarded by his first and second serve. He won 70% by his first and 67% by the second serve. Medvedev dipped a little bit. He won 72% by his first serve, and Nadal started to return better. And, and Medvedev only won 46% by his second serve. In the fourth tight set, Medvedev's number dipped even more. He won 60% by his first serve and 42 by his second serve. Nadal was uh, raising again to seven. He won 72% by his first serves and 53% by his second serve. And Medvedev 15 winners and 12 uh, unforcerous. A little bit more unforcerous. Nadal, on the other hand, switched the number a little bit, did 20 winners and 14 unforcerous. And Nadal converted those two break points out of 10 in the fourth crucial set, and Medvedev only won. Because in this battle, uh, it was a break point conversion party. Both of them had plenty of chances. Uh, Nadal uh, broke uh, Medvedev six times and Medvedev broke him seven times. Totally, they uh, had 22 break point opportunities each. Nadal uh, returned better on the second serve uh, and Medvedev returned better on Rafa's first serve. So that was e e And Medvedev won totally more points than Nadal also. So that... that, that that was also a number that was uh, that says even if you win more points doesn't mean you win. Just look at the Wimbledon final in 2019. After the epic loss in 2017 against um, Djokovic uh, against Federer and then the uh, the loss against Djokovic in uh, 2019, I thought Nadal will, is never gonna win an, his best chance of winning a hardcore title uh, in Grand Slams or, or at the U Super event, but. Finally, in his sixth final, he claims his second. He has now won all the Grand Slams at least twice. He's up in the lead with 21 Grand Slams. And uh, this mighty Spaniard is showing why he's the consistent player. Because after the first two sets, what message did Rafael Nadal send out to Dan Medvedev? I'm going to be here. I'm not going to disappear. You have to work for every point. And Medvedev started to do unforced uh, errors uh, after unforced errors. All right, back to the what Nadal did so great. Uh, uh, in the first two sets, it was very close. He had the lead in the se second set. He was up 4-1. He had uh, a set point, I believe. But Medvedev didn't want to surrender that easy. He came back and won that tiebreaker. And Nadal, uh, in the first two sets, his back and down line wasn't great. He sliced a little bit too much, even though it was a good fought. His serve was very weak in the first two sets. And the longer the Larry rallies went, he, he got more pr uh, problems. He struggled a little bit more because in the previous rounds, he has much shortened. Um, his average uh, rallies were around five, four or five points. But after the first set, the average rally was a little bit... Uh, above six or seven uh, shots. So the resistant um, uh, Russian took advantage of that, didn't miss a lot, created a lot of uh, uh, angles, and Nadal really tried. He used the whole court to his advantage. That that's why it paid off in the end. Because now I'm going to go into what Medvedev did great in, the, in this battle and what he did not do great. From the beginning, he played flawless tennis like he always does. From the baseline, he was positioning himself great on the court. He was an, uh, His court coverage were amazing. He was like a wall. He barely didn't miss. He kept the ball alive all the time and uh, tortured Nadal from the baseline. His shot tolerance was amazing. He got that length, length in the, and depth in his shot a la Novak Djokovic. And when you give Nadal his own medicine... He will have a big time problem. And since the Medvedev is 10 years uh, younger than him, which we couldn't see in the end, I thought that uh, Medvedev got more tired in the end and than Nadal. Nadal was more fit and fresh. He re energized after the fourth set. He knew that he had the 
one not uh, once in life than opponent opportunity but a superbly great chance of winning this and uh, he took time away from Nadal like you have to do on these fat su surfaces and he returned great but what happened in the uh, in the middle of the first set when Nadal took over his forehand started to crack he made some crucial uh, uh, bad decision when he approached the net and oh my god those drop shots from Medvedev's racket was horrible. It was one of the worst performed drop shots I've ever seen in my life from a professional tennis player. Look what Gaston did at French Open in 2020. Look how he did those drop shots. Look at Novak sometimes when he do, do those do, uh, drop shots. And the precision and stamina from free, uh, this, the precision and decision making from set three was awful for Medvedev. He was not the big point player in this match. He choked a little bit, in my opinion, but Rafa raised his level. This fighting spirit, this raging bull from Mallorca didn't want to surrender. He didn't want to lose. He wanted to win this trophy more than Daniel Medvedev. And to be honest, in the end, Nadal was a much, much, much better player, even though it was a tough call in the, uh, in the fifth set. I thought uh, when he broke back, uh, when Nadal was surfing the match, I said Nadal is going to break him back. He, he didn't look that fit and Nadal immediately took his teeth into his serve, broke him and served out the uh, service game and won the match. But it was a tough call. Nadal's whipping forehand was the main key. The way he executed that uh, forehand, it was like a nuclear weapon. It was the old Nadal we saw using that Lethally deadly forehand, and that opened up big wounds in in uh, Medvedev's defensive because he couldn't handle that forehand in the beginning. And uh, I'm not gonna take credits uh, from either of the players. Both of them did an amazing match. It, it was almost five and a half hour battle. Uh, Nadal have uh, through the years given us those amazing long battle. Uh, it, it, it's match. His matches are for ages. Look at the final 2022. Uh, Look at the final 2017. Look at the final uh, 2012 against Novak Djokovic. Uh, both of them went the distance. It had to be an epic battle. A lot of the audience were satisfied. I think everybody, if, you're not, if you were not, not rooting for Medvedev, we wanted a tough battle. I wanted high quality tennis from both players and I got that. I'm satisfied. Um, like I said, first time in his career in a Grand Slam final, Nadal is down 2-0 and did this epic comeback. Rafael Nadal, 21 Grand Slams. Novak Djokovic, 20. Uh, Federer, 20. So all in all, uh, what can we say more about Medvedev? The, it, I think it, it was too much pressure on his shoulder in the end. He knew, he knew that... He had to perform. He couldn't do that because Nadal was there. Like I said, against Nadal, you can't take naps. You can't take vacations. You can't take time off. You can't put the pause button like Medvedev did. He had the match in his hand. 3-2, two, two sets up, three break points. You can't lose that against Nadal. Give him your finger. He won't be satisfied. He will take your soul instead. He will swallow you alive. He will never, never compromise with you. And that's why he's the most fierce competitor. That's why he's now the statistical greatest tennis player of all time. That topic is for up for discussion for other peoples. I don't mind that so much. I'm just amazed of witnessing this amazing athlete, Rafael Nadal. Who on hell did believe that he's going to win this tournament? I knew that he has a ch uh, slight chance. I had him as my number three. Uh, if Medve if Zverev was going to crash out. I said, after, Medvedev, uh, after Zverev lost, I said, Nadal is going to be in the final. And then it depends on who he's playing against. I said in my preview before the final, I give uh, Medvedev the slightest margin that you can possibly think of. 0.5% to his advantage. I was wrong. But am I sad because I was wrong? Absolutely not. A great athlete like Nadal. A great performance. A great comeback. 
the fighting spirit out of this world, the force of nature, how can I be disappointed about uh, what I predict? I'm just amazing that I still can see. The guy is turning 36. Medvedev was going to crash the wall. He was going to crash open that gate because after defeating Novak in straight sets at US Open, he was on his way to defeat Nadal also in three straight sets. That's what um, tennis has been waiting for in, uh, if you're uh, not a fan of this Giants, we want some people wanted change of guards. When are we gonna see change of guard? Really, now it's fresh open here. Nadal can take his uh, 22 second, uh, 20 second Grand Slam, and uh, just add more to the trophy cabinet and add more titles. Nadal, really, really, what a performance! I'm, I can talk about this all day now. Uh, first, I didn't have any words to express myself before this story. I was not empty. I was not shocked. I was just mesmerized. I was just too, uh, how do you say, impressed of what a kind of athlete. You, he beat COVID. Uh, he beat his foot injury. He beat all of his opponents over two hour, uh, over two weeks in um, three set match, seven matches totally. Nadal, is the last man standing. The draw have reduced to only one guy. And that champion is Rafael Nadal, El Toro. <sighs> Guys, ladies, whoever is watching this video, I'm super impressed. What a performance. Medvedev, can he lick his wounds and take this loss as an great experience he didn't do that because um, he lost the US Open final in 2019 he lost this final again he has lost now three Grand Slam finals and he has chance of of course collecting more in the future uh, what can we say Nadal 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 if you take more risks you will be more rewarded that's what happened today Nadal only chance was Mixing up the game like he did, uh, take risks, go for the trigger, try to do what you have to do uh, against players like Medvedev and Novak Djokovic, guys or that that are so difficult to hit through. Nadal find his formula worked in the end. It was a game of physical fatigue, and uh, in the end, Nadal's game plan worked. He wore down the Russian. He couldn't uh, come up with the goods when it was most necessary. He was a bigger clutch player. Like I said, the biggest uh, point player wins the biggest matches, not the guy that wins the most points. All right, folks, uh, that was all for this Australian Open 2022 campaign. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Take care and bye-bye.